Hey there, sexy. It's Dina Diane Sanchez and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing? I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. On today's video, girl, we about to catch up. Okay, I have to address the elephant in the room. The elephant, not meaning my dick, but like meaning that I don't know how I look. I've got no viewfinder. I'm filming on my iPhone. So if I look like shit, then so be it. But shut your mouth. Watch your mouth. And let's just enjoy what I have to say, okay? Because I can actually not see what I'm doing at all. So if my hair is bad, if my wig is out of place, if my lipstick is kind of wad, I've got a mirror over there. This is not lip gloss, by the way. It's a lip treatment because my lips are so dry. So yes, I am that girl that will put a lip liner and then a lip treatment over it. But anyway, let's get into the questions. Let me put my rings on before anything, girl. I put up like one of these question boxes on my Instagram stories the other day, and I've combined both from my English Instagram and my Spanish Instagram both together into this video for you. So let's just get reading and see what you guys have to say. What is the biggest difference between dating Spanish guys and foreign guys? I think, well, obviously I've not dated a lot, so I don't really know. The biggest difference that I can picture, this might just be my boyfriend though. This doesn't have to be every English guy, but I think <laughs> Spanish guys are not emotional whatsoever. At least the guys that I've been with, they've never been like emotional. They've never, you know, there's big words out there like mental health, like stuff like that. Spanish men have never, ever said anything like that. Like they don't really care for anything. They don't really have an issue. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, I'm just sensitive or it's, I'm just a girl. But dating my boyfriend now, he's so sensitive as well. He's so emotional and he's, I think also like English people take mental health a lot more seriously than like maybe Spanish people will. It's, it's not like that big of a deal over here. Not that it isn't, but it's treated like it's not. So you always kind of like shut your mouth about it. Yeah, I think that would be the biggest difference. I think it's gonna be the emotions of it all. The Spanish guys that I've been with, they were just, it was a lot more sexual tension and it was a lot more um, just being extremely like, oh, I'm, I'm a man, man, like I'm, I'm rough and all this. And then just cry behind a corner when I'm not looking. With my boyfriend, it's a lot more open, if you know what I mean. What's your biggest lesson in 2023 that you will benefit from going into 2024? Girl, that's such a big question. This is gonna sound super weird and I know like I'm 27, so I'm a bit late to learn this, but I think being financially stable is so important. I never looked at money for what it is. I always just thought, oh, you know, like again, this could be trigger warning, talking about depression, talking about going away somewhere. <laughs> I always have in the back of my mind, like, oh my God, I need to treat myself or I need to do this because who knows, maybe I'll have a mental breakdown tomorrow and actually decide to end it. So I'm like, oh my God, I have 1,300 euros in my bank account. Let me buy the new iPhone 15 Pro Max and like starve. Yeah, that is literally me. And like things happen, like I have to move or I want to do something or what if I want to go on like a long holiday with my boyfriend now? I cannot do it because I have no savings. I've made so much money in the past. I've made crazy amounts of money. And I'm like, girl, why did you spend it on like silly things? Because a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it did go on makeup. Like all that drawer over there is full of makeup and skincare. I've got one drawer here, one drawer here, full of makeup and skincare. I've got expensive wigs, I've got nice clothes. But it's like, then I see the little things like, oh, how many taxis did I take this year that I only took them because I was lazy? I could have taken the bus, no problem. Why did I take that taxi? Why did I spend the 20 quid? instead of the one euro 40 cent. You think about it that way. So I genuinely, the biggest lesson for me this year is gonna be saving up and being smart with my money. Not everything has to be a treat. I don't have to treat myself into everything. And girl, I know for the, the past 10 years I've said, oh, you know, like I might break down and I might wanna die tomorrow. And if I do it, then, oh, what's money gonna do? But girl, if you actually don't die, you're gonna need that money. So be smart. <laughs> Just being more financially stable, having a backup plan, having savings, having something to like fall back on, I think it's gonna be a huge change in my life for me. When I made two grand a month, then when I made 600 a month, even when I made like when I was years ago, when I was like broke and I was making like 300 a month because COVID, can you say that word on YouTube now? I don't know. Even back then, I would still spend everything. I would find a way to spend up to the last cent so that my account could be on zero, zero. I'm so bad with money, so, so bad. Okay, the biggest question, the most asked question, and I don't wanna be 
dwelling on this question for like a million years. But the most asked question was, why did you move? Why have you moved? Why did you leave your friend's apartment? Why did you go back to your parents' house? Long story short, I think I explained a little bit in a vlog, but long story short, I thought we were gonna get along so well. I have lived with many friends in the past and yes, people do like bicker and people do like have issues. They argue like with my old friends, like Lena and Nyla, I used to live with them and we would argue over the smallest shit, like who cleaned this, who's cleaning that, cleaning duties, all of this, but BS. And we're still super close to this day. A lot of people that I've lived with, like I'm still totally fine to this day. It just sucked because this girl was like a friend of mine since I was like five years old. And I always thought that she was gonna be there for my whole life. And as soon as I moved with her, it just kind of became hell. Like I felt like she didn't want me there. I felt like she was looking for an excuse to like make me leave. I think I felt like she wanted to kick me out from week one. It was the same week that like my boyfriend came over for a week. And I did say to her, hey, is it okay if you like take care of my cat? Like look at him. I don't know if you can see him in the camera, but he's literally just laying there. I said, okay, if you just take care of him for the day, like I can come every second day, just check on his food. Like, like if I, if I feed him today, you only have to check on his food tomorrow. Like he's okay with a bowl of water and a bowl of food. He doesn't eat that much. So, and she was like, of course, girl, of course, like whatever. And then she told me that she booked the week off as well. So she could spend it with me and my boyfriend. And I'm like, you know, since then it kind of changed because I had to tell her like, yo, I'm going to be with my boyfriend. I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. I don't want to bullshit on anybody. I don't want to shit on people, but I understand that like I've given so much of uh, like insight in my life to you guys that I feel like I owed you an explanation about this also. And a lot of you were wondering. So yeah, it was just kind of awful. I had to message her a million times because she would give me like silent treatment around the house. And I felt like I was trapped in my bedroom because I couldn't even leave because she would be out there with like her kids or guys or whatever. I, I genuinely like don't know. I just felt like she hated me and she kept saying, she kept pushing it off. I was like, listen, do you want to like have a conversation? We're friends for a million years. Do you want to sit down and tell me what's going on? She's like, nothing's going on, nothing's going on. And then like two months down the line, apparently everything was going on. She started like lying, started talking badly about me to everybody and everybody was telling me and I'm like, God, I haven't done this girl anything. She started like lying about me and my cat to everybody. She's like, no, her cat peed on my bed. My cat does not pee on beds. My cat has his perfectly fine litter over there. Like, Trey, like, why would he pee in your bed? She started like locking him inside when I left the house and her kids would tell me like, mommy is horrible, she's locked your cat. Every, every time you leave the house, she locks him. And I'm like, why? Like, I'm paying your rent. I'm paying half of your freaking rent. You told me to do this. You told me to leave that house, come to yours. It was gonna be a dream come true. We would all, we would both be able to save up. I was just doing social media at the time. I wasn't even working. And then the first week that I got my new job, within one week, I was there for one week and she was like, you have to leave. You have to get the fuck out. Like someone else is moving in. And I'm like, but why? She's like, you just have to do it. I, I can't stand you or your cat. And I'm like, but we're literally in my room all the time. Like why? She's like, no, he's peed on my bed. He's peed on the sofa. I'm like, he hasn't. She would do a million things. She would lock him. She would not feed him. She would, she would tell me she was gonna feed him and then not feed him purposely. She would close him with like all windows closed and everything like, she would like, there was raining one of the nights and she apparently didn't realize and she locked him out. Just awful, awful behavior. So it ended up being like that. She literally left me quote unquote homeless cause I had no money. I clearly had no savings and I kind of had nowhere to go. And obviously I didn't want to come back to my parents' house, let's be honest. But you know, things are working out. I am just figuring out what I want to do with my future. And then I'm still working. I'm just going to learn how to save. That's what I got to do now. I got to learn how to save and how to never like have no money to go anywhere if anything like this were to happen ever again because that was so scary having someone that i've always loved and cared for and a friend for all these years just out of the blue kick you out and leave you basically in the streets like no one could take me in it was horrible it was horrible i was crying for like days just trying to find an apartment she was like i'm gonna give you two weeks you have two weeks to leave but yeah everything turned out fine and i'm just so happy that like i'm good but that is good he's loved i'm just glad that i could take that person out of my life she's gone for good she's still bullshitting about me talking bad about me to people i don't care genuinely if that makes her any good sure my conscience is clear i was never a bad friend to her and i just i do hate her now for what she's done to me and you know there was back and forth messaging on like 
girl, how did you do this? I'm like, listen, I left your house on the 19th. Like, I didn't ask for my rent back. You use that rent and do whatever you want to do. You lose some and you win some and I lost one there, but that's totally fine. I'm okay. Opinions on your new iPhone 15. I love it. It's amazing. It's so good. It films like great. Obviously the quality is amazing. I'm looking into investing in a mic, but right now I'm just fully saving up. So that will have to come eventually, but I would love to have a proper mic. So the quality, like the sound, like the audio quality is better, but I'm really happy with it. I'm super pleased. I got the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So it's quite big as well compared to like my iPhone 11 that I was with. So very, very happy. I really, really like it. Do you think that having a partner has helped with your self-esteem? Um, yes and no. In the sense that like, I feel loved, I feel pretty, I have a boyfriend, like I'm not, I'm super content. I'm not looking for attention anywhere else like I used to or anything like that. I don't go out now to find guys or I don't dress a certain way to get guys attention. I don't do my makeup for, which I used to before and it was so wrong, but I've said this a million times. I have, I have self-esteem issues big time. I want approval all the time. But now I can see myself wanting approval from my boyfriend all the time. And it's like, girl, you're so annoying. He doesn't say that, but I say that to myself. I'm like, why do I care <laughs> if he doesn't call me pretty seven times a day and just does it five times? Why are those two times an issue for me? You know, I'm very much like that. I'm still like debating, I guess, my own demons and my self issues, like my inner issues with like, am I pretty enough? Am I good enough? I always feel like I'm never good enough. Every time I spiral or like, I break down, I'm like, I'm not good enough for anything. I think having a partner has helped me grow in so many ways, but I do also think that it's created a lot more, like a lot, a lot of new insecurities that I'm working on. We're working on them. It's gonna be fine. Can you help me go through a breakout where he cheated on me? I can't stop stalking him. Girl, just, I think you just have to de-romanticize everything that he's done to you. Like, oh my God, he held my hand on the first day but he cheated on you. Oh my God, he took him to the cinema, but he cheated on you. Oh my God, my, my, he, when he met my dad, they were so nice, but he cheated on you. That's what I did back in the day. Like if you wanna de-romanticize someone or de-idealize, like take someone off the pedestal, that's what I would do. I would just repeat everything. Cause you always remember the good things. Like doesn't matter what happens. You always wanna go back to like the good things. Even like if your boyfriend is like, sorry, trigger warning, abuse. But if your boyfriend is like beating you up, you're gonna be like, oh my God, but it was so nice that day we went to like the park. No, girl, you need to re like remember what happened after, not the good moments. If it's bad, focus on the bad. Cause if you focus on the good, you'll want him back. And that's, no girly. Have you and your boyfriend thought about moving countries, whether you going to him or going somewhere else? Yeah, we have. I love that not even you said coming to Spain. We all know Spain is a bit shit right now. Um, yeah, we have. We've talked about it. We've, we're thinking about it. We're deciding what to do, where to go. I know I'm trying not to overthink or overstress or overplan, which is my big issue. So I'm just trying to play by ear and just see what happens with life. How old were you when you lost your virginity? I lost my virginity at 20, almost 21. I know. Are you not scared of your boyfriend being disloyal, like cheating? I think, isn't everybody scared? It's not even just long distance. Like if your boyfriend wanted to cheat on you, he would cheat on you. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not scared of that. I, I think when you're with someone, you just have to trust someone. Yes, I do have a lot of trust issues, but I think it's good to just, you know, keep them aside. If he or if anyone were to cheat on anyone, they would do it regardless. Um, they wouldn't care. A cheater is gonna be a cheater and whoever's gonna cheat is gonna do it regardless. Doesn't matter if you overthink it or you don't. So it's better to choose the not overthinking side of it all. Stop putting ideas in my head. What are you gonna do during Christmas? Greetings from California. Hello, Kelly. This Christmas, I know that I'm gonna spend the 24th with my mom, my stepdad and my sister. 25th, I'm gonna be spending it with my dad's side of the family. So like my dad, my stepmom and my siblings from my dad's side. And then I believe even the 31st, I am off. So I'm gonna be spending it with my sister and my mom and my stepdad and Luna and Felipe. You know, those are my plans. Not much um, planned yet because I'm just playing it by ear. I just found out that I was gonna be off yesterday. So I don't really know, 
but I'm just very sad that I'm not getting the 25th off because normally we do Christmas family dinner with all my family on the 24th. This year they've moved it to the 25th and I have to work the 25th. So I can only do lunch with my dad's side of the family, not dinner with my mom's side of it. So it is what it is, but at least I'm off like a lot of the times. Are you ready? for 2024. I'm so ready for 2024. Honestly, I have so much to look for. I have so many goals. I have so many plans for this year. I genuinely cannot wait. I feel like I've also grown so much this past year and I cannot wait for the new year. I cannot wait to see where it brings. There's so much I want to do, like the usual, like, oh my God, I want to go to the gym. But like, no, there's so much I want to do. There's so much to look forward to. I'm very excited and I'm finally, like I said, I'm finally working on my mental health. I'm taking the meds that I need. I'm I'm taking all the steps to just becoming the, the best version of the best version of myself. So hopefully it all pays off and hopefully it's all worth it in the end. I'm just very nervous yet very excited. So yes, I'm very looking forward for 2024. And I'm obviously looking forward to spending it with you guys. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, don't forget to stay sexy. I love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.